everybody. How you doing? Today we're going to talk about the buzz roll. The buzz roll. Bzzz, right? And I'm going to try to show it to you both ways, a traditional grip and match, but you, and you should have it uh, as good both ways, okay? And we're going to morph that into the whipped cream roll, and I'm going to show you what that is in a second. Okay. So the buzz roll, let's talk a little bit about the name. Okay, the buzz roll is something that we call it now, I think just because that's what it sounds like to us, right? Because look, you know, this probably came from the jazz and rock musicians, and you know, there's one thing you can definitely say about the jazz and rock guys is, you know, hey, we're, we're not the brightest, you know, we're not, we're not the brightest. Anyway, so it sounds like a, like, bzzz, you know, on a good snare drum, so I guess that's why it's called that. However, if you were a classical musician playing symphonic music, you would call it a closed roll. A closed roll. And I would assume it's because the idea of the normal double stroke roll, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, is open because there's a definite rhythmical pattern, right? And then as you make that into a buzz, watch, here we go from the, uh, the open roll. Now I'm going to morph that into a buzz. Here we go. Open up roll. Buzz. Open. Buzz. Okay, so I'm going from a very rhythmical thing that you can notate. You know, I can make this 30 second notes or something. It's, you know, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, left, to this. Which, who knows what that is? How, who knows how many times my sticks are hitting? We just don't know. We don't know any of that stuff, right? All we know is it's, it's one sound, and it's kind of our sustain. Right? It is the way that drummers have sustain. Right? I am not producing any kind of rhythm here. There's no rhythm when I do this. There's just, you know, right? So I guess, you know, that's the idea of the closed roll. We are, we are excluding rhythmic, rhythmical um, creations from that. Right? That's, not, that's a bad word. I'm not, I can't find the right word for a second. We're excluding our rhythmical um, notation with that. We are simply doing sustain. We're playing a half note, one, two, three. We're playing a whole note, one, two, three, four, one. Right? I'm going to switch hands on that one. So um, that's our sustain. However, I think the better name for this the one that really explains the physics behind this is the press roll. The press roll. That's a, the military term for it. You know, if you were back in the army in the 40s and 50s, they would call this a press roll. So what are we doing? What is a press roll? Okay, so you, you got this part, right? Right? I'm buzzing the stick, but how am I doing this? How am I doing this, right? I've seen guys do this badly, where they're doing this. And they sort of get a, excuse my language, half-assed, kind of open, closed roll. You know, yeah, there's not too much rhythm in it, but too much rhythm for a real buzz. Um, it, it just sounds like they never took a lesson in their life. They, they saw a couple of videos and they call themselves a drummer, you know. So, what... What are the, like, Buddy Rich, his buzz roll or his press roll was immaculate. It was just beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. And we're going to get to when he would morph it into a whipped cream roll, which I don't think I do as well as some other guys do, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Um, so, the, the looser I hold my thumb and my, f my first finger, the more open and slower my stick is going to move. As I increase the pressure here, and hence the press roll, I'm going to get a faster movement, and that's what I want. A good buzz roll requires, requires this stick 
to move as quickly as possible, right? Not a lot of power in each, in each stroke, but it needs to move as quickly as possible on the surface that it's on uh, so that rhythm is gone and you just hear this buzz from the hits. Just like when a bee or a hummingbird flaps their wings, they flap it so much uh, so quickly that you just hear that buzz of them going by. That's the same idea, right? It's too fast for me to distinguish this kind of thing. Where, okay, that's like six, six strokes, right? You know, when I'm holding it really loose. So it's the same thing. Here's my right hand. I'm going, you know, really loose with it. And as I uh, strengthen my, first, my thumb and my first finger, and if you're doing the traditional group, it's the same idea. I'm using my finger up here somewhat. The pressure I'm putting on the stick right here. But you notice when I actually do the buzz roll, I really do use my finger because I want to control how long I'm letting it buzz. And that's the way I do it here, right? So it's very open. And I'm controlling how long I'm letting this thing buzz. Right, so it comes from here, and then a little pressure from this finger to control the length of time I'm allowing it to buzz, right? Uh, and if you notice, I, and we're gonna get to this in a minute, where I kinda go sideways a little bit, right? We're gonna get to that in a little bit. But let's talk about the science, and then we're gonna actually talk about drum sound, okay? So, when I hit the drum, the stick normally wants to come back. This is the physics of it, right? But I'm stopping that from happening, and I'm taking that kinetic energy, and I'm, by the pressure I put right here, forcing the energy to go back to the tip. And the more pressure I put here, the quicker that energy moves back to the tip, right? Because when it's loose, right, some of the energy is coming back here, or the energy is kind of dissipating all over the place. But when I hold really tight, and I, this is like a stopping point, I force that energy, and with enough pressure back, I force energy back to make that stick bounce as quickly as possible for whatever duration of time I want, right? And again, it's the same thing for the traditional, traditional grip hand, and that happens here. However, I do tend to do most of my um, buzz rolls match grip. I do do it. Uh, for me, I think I get a little more power out of it, and it seems to be less... Um, to get the buzz roll I want, uh, it seems to be easier. It seems to be easier. Okay, let's talk about drums for a second, right? So, as we explained in part one of this video here, uh, I'm holding this between my first finger and my thumb relatively tight. Not too tight, but relatively tight, right? Now, I have several different snare drums. This is the drum I use in my practice kit because you know, it's the, it's, I've had it for like 25, 30 years. It used to sound great. Now the shells are so warped. It just, it's never going to sound much better than okay. I do keep a good head on it, but because it's so warped, I can never tighten it as evenly as I want, and it's, and it's the level that I want. So it's just not a, I don't like taking this drum out to gigs anymore. So it stays in my practice kit. It's fine for practice, right? And, but I have to, so here's where gear comes in handy, right? And I am a big believer, I'm going to say this a couple of times, a big believer that gear doesn't matter all that much, right? If you, if you listen to some of the, the GAD clinics and, and the GAD interviews, uh, Steve GAD, who in my estimation is, is the GOAT, the greatest of all time, there's stories, you know, he was booked eight hours, you know, at four different sessions going from studio to studio to studio. He, didn't, he did not have time to carry gear with him. So he would go in the studios and some of the gear that was there were cracked cymbals and broken down snare drums where the thrower wasn't even working and he had to put tape on the drums and all that kind of stuff. But whatever he had available to him, he made work because Steve is that great. He, in my estimation, I don't care, you disagree, whatever, he is maybe the most influential uh, drummer in our history, in our time, in the last hundred years. I, I mean, that's how I feel about it. So. I like that I get to practice on a bad snare drum because I have to work a little harder. Again, so 
I am. You, you can't close it as much as a pad. Now I can buzz these more on my DW drum. My DW, which is a beautiful drum, uh, it is one of the top of the line DWs. Uh, that is just, it's gorgeous, it's nickel plated, there's no warping in it, and man, my buzz roll sounds beautiful, but it doesn't sound that bad on this snare drum. And that's what you want. Practice it at a level on a drum that it's not gonna sound that great. And if you can make it sound good there, when you do get a good drum in your hand, guess what? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So here's what I'm doing. Let's start at the edge. Now, did you notice? As I came to the center, I start doing this thing. Sideways. Now, why? Loosen, you can hear more rhythm. As I tighten, the rhythm goes away, right? And that's what you want, the rhythm to go away. So why do I start going sideways? That is called the whipped cream roll. You need to, again, we need to look up Ed Shaughnessy's whipped cream roll. All right, this is something that Buddy Rich used to do. By going sideways, I get more time on the surface of the kit. So now, not only do I have a very fast hit because of the pressure I'm putting, I have more of a fast hit. So that I can now really avoid that up and down motion, which no matter what I do is going to give me a little bit of rhythm. You know, if you're doing this, now I'm exaggerating. You can hear the percolate. As I go sideways, you lose the sense of that uh, percolation. You, you get much more of a right? And that is called the whipped cream roll. So that is like part two of your roll. First get this down, and yeah, a good way to start it is go to the edge of your drum. Right? But don't be afraid to do your buzz roll here. Right? And right there, it doesn't sound as as bad as you think it would, right? Because I have learned, and you can even see I'm doing little swirls here, because I know that I have to work a little harder in the center. A little, a little harder in the center. I said that twice on purpose, even though I'm a little bit nuts. So let me tell you a little story about the buzz roll. This is kind of a cool story. Uh, I auditioned for a blues band. Kind of. It wasn't really an audition, it was a gig. You know, they audition you on the gig and you're playing the gig. And one of the leaders of the band, he was a harmonica player, he passed away now. He was, and I ended up working for his band as well. Um, you know, okay, I'm going to upset some people right now. Look, blues is not the hardest form of music to play. It just is not. So, you know, a comparison, in comparison with, you know, a Frank Zappa tune, blues is not that difficult to play. All right, but it is, it is hard to master and get the right feel and the right shuffle. I don't want to discount blues. I do play a lot of blues, and I know a lot of guys who have a shuffle that's, you know, you've got to have a decent shuffle. Well, that was rough. That was rough to say. <laughs> anyway, um, I ended up doing a buzz roll for some... I, 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 I think I introed into a song. I let them do the first four bars when they came in on the four chord. Uh, I did a buzz roll in and to the cymbal, and after the audition audition gig was over, the harmonica player uh, said to me, um, oh, I knew you were the guy right away because of your buzz roll. He said it was beautiful, it was clean and crisp and right into the cymbal, and I hear a lot of guys just do a half-ass buzz roll. So you think that they're not listening and that they don't know, but they do. They do. So. I gotta tell you the truth, folks. I gotta tell you the really God's honest truth. I hear a lot of guys do buzz rolls, and a lot of them, it's just not that good. They do one that they 
learned when they were 13 and they never really mastered it. I'm going to tell you the truth how hard I think this buzz roll is to master. I started doing my buzz rolls probably at 13, 14 years old. Do you know when I really liked it? When I really liked it? Probably at 30. Probably at 30. Again, yes, does it help to have a good drum? Somewhat. Somewhat. But you can get a good buzz roll on your pad. And that's a good place to learn. You do get more bounce from the pad than you would from a drum. So you have to measure that out a little bit. You know, don't only practice it on your pad. Don't only practice it on your drum. You want both, right? But a good buzz roll, I'll tell you, here's the bigger picture. The kind of finesse and the kind of control you learn off your buzz, you just can't get anywhere else just by practicing the buzz roll. So here we go. I'm going to take us out with this. One, two, three, four.